Alrighty. Welcome everybody to another wonderful Otter Talk. Today we're joined by Anirban Don coming from the University of Tampa. And he's going to be giving us a talk on Laurent series and spaces of holomorphic functions. So thank you so much. And Anirban, take it away. Thank you, Doug. And thank you all the organizers uh, for giving me the opportunity to uh, present my talk here. So uh, as Doug said, uh, the title of my talk is uh, Lorna series in the spaces of homomorphic functions. So let's get started with something all of us have done it in the first year of taking uh, complex analysis. Um, we all know, like, uh, suppose, uh, let's say D be uh, like unit disk in, in the one, one variable complex plane. And suppose F is a holomorphic or analytic function on the unit disk. So then we all know that F admits a power series, we call it a Taylor series. Um, and this series converges uh, uniformly on complex subset of the disk. That means uh, basically if you take the uh, partial sums, the partial sums converge uniformly on complex subsets of the unit disk. Um, instead of a disk, if you take an annulus uh, with uh, inner and outer inner and outer radius R and R respectively, then instead of a Taylor series, you get an R series. And the Laura series also, like if you take the partial sums from negative n to n, uh, the partial sums converge to that function uniformly on complex subsets of that annulus. Both these results can be generalized to uh, several variables. Like for example, in one variable, the um, domains are like uh, very nice, like they are uh, either a disk or an annulus where you talked about series. In several variables, uh, um, the domains that has those kind of circular symmetry, we call them a uh, Reinhardt domain. Uh, for example, a Reinhardt domain can be like, for example, in a complex two variable, it will be like a disk cross disk or an annulus cross disk or a disk cross annulus. So those are called Reinhardt domains where there is a circular symmetry in each variable. And if uh, the origin belongs to that uh, domain, we call it a complete Reinhardt domain. For example, a disk cross disk is a complete Reinhardt domain because the origin belongs to it. Uh, suppose, uh, um, let's take O omega, uh, let's denote O omega to be the spaces of holomorphic functions um, on that uh, uh, Reinhardt domain, then uh, depending on where it, what, where it is complete or not, uh, we have a uh, Taylor series or a Laura series. And those series also converges uniformly on complex subsets. And that's the, basically the topology of uh, O omega, which is uh, converging on uniformly on complex subsets. <clears throat> we can uh, talk about more general spaces, like O omega, it's a it's a um, fresh air space. So we can talk about more general spaces. Uh, we talk about uh, locally convex topological vector spaces. Um, basically, it means that it is a vector space. It has a topology with respect to which the vector space operations, that means the addition and the scalar multiplications are continuous. It has a local basis whose members are convex. And there is uh, like a, um, a family of continuous semi norms which generates the topology. Uh, for example, uh, the Hilbert spaces, the Banach spaces, they are all uh, locally convex topological vector spaces. Okay, uh, we can, um, in fact, the Frisch spaces, which is basically a generalization of Banach space, they are all uh, locally convex topological vector spaces. We consider um, the um, like suppose X be a locally convex topological vector space. Uh, and which is a subset of a space of our holomorphic functions. What can we talk about the convergence of Laura series in X? Okay. X belong, I mean, X uh, lies in a space of our holomorphic functions. So what can we talk about the uh, convergence of Laura series in X? We all know that since uh, X already lies in, I mean, X belongs to, um, 
sorry, X is a subset of uh, Omega. That's the space of all holomorphic functions. We all know that uh, um, the Lorna series always uh, converge, converges uniformly on complex subsets of Omega. But we are not talking about that topology. We are talking about uh, some more stronger topology of X. What about the convergence in the topology of X, which is most of the cases stronger than Omega? What are some examples of uh, these kind of X? Um, some uh, locally convex topological vector space, which is a subset of Omega. Uh, our um, one of the main examples that we all know about is the Hardy space on the unit disk. It is a space of all holomorphic functions, uh, which has the Hardy norm um, finite, and the Hardy norm is defined like this. Um, we, uh, I mean, it is a um, result of uh, Embry's. It says that if you take uh, if you take the p in between uh, strictly between one to infinity then the Taylor series of the functions in the Hardy space, uh, the Taylor series converges in the Hardy norm, which is um, like a stronger norm than o, like O of T, let's say. And uh, remember this, uh, mm, mm, I mean, uh, <clears throat> remember the, uh, Remember this P, which lies strictly between 1 to infinity. For P equals to 1, uh, this case is not true. We'll, we'll talk about that later. But in fact, uh, instead of uh, a Hardy space, we can talk about uh, a Bergman space also. That is another example of a locally convex topological vector space, which is a subset of Omega. What is a Bergman space? Um, so let's uh, recall what is a Bergman space. Suppose uh, omega is a Reinhardt domain. That means it has a circular symmetry in each of the variable. Then um, uh, Hardy space, sorry, um, Bergman space is the space of all uh, LP holomorphic functions. It means they are holomorphic functions, which has LP norm finite. For P equals to two, uh, it's a Hilbert space. For P, which is not two, it's a, uh, so Barnack space. Uh, the convergence results uh, in uh, Bergman space, they are also very important um, in complex analysis. Uh, it was proved by Zhu uh, that for the same uh, interval of P, it's strictly between one to infinity. And the Taylor series in the Bergman space uh, also converges in the AP norm. When you take uh, the map, uh, when you take just one dimensional disk. Uh, this results was, uh, I mean, uh, more generalized to the fact of a bounded uh, Reinhardt domain on CN. And uh, the result is due to Chakrabarty, uh, Ed Holman, McNeil, uh, who proved that uh, if you take the Lorna series in Bergman space of a bounded Reinhardt domain, then also the Laura series converges in the stronger norm, that means in the AP norm. Okay. Now, um, we talked about P equals to one case. Remember that P equals to one case is, uh, is not so simple. Uh, for H1 of D, um, it doesn't converge, the, the, the Taylor series in H1 of D, uh, it doesn't converge in H1 norm. And it was proved by uh, McNeil and Xiong. They proved that uh, for um, H1 of D, the partial sums, they, that doesn't converge to H1D, but it's converged in a weaker norm, uh, that's the A1D. So we are just uh, finding out convergence of uh, Taylor series on Laura series in, um, in topologies of that space. Sorry, I don't know, just a couple of questions here. Um, yes. So does this result fail for, mm. uh, so, right, okay. So maybe you've said this, that, uh, mm -hmm. you know, if you have a function in H1, um, mm -hmm. yeah, so so I guess you're you're thinking about this being embedded into A1 mm -hmm. um, and and you look at the, the Taylor series there. Mm -hmm. um, is there something going on here with that when P equals one, you don't have like a, uniformly convex space is that uh, play a role here or 
that, that's maybe a question for later on. Yeah, that, maybe later. Yeah, I will yeah. ask. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, the question we ask is uh, a more general question. Uh, suppose you take X to be any uh, locally convex topological vector space, which is embedded in O omega, and you take the Lorna series, uh, uh, which is, uh, suppose uh, F of Z can be written as alpha within Zn, C alpha, Z alpha where Z alpha means uh, Z1 to the power alpha 1, Z2 to the power alpha 2, and so on. <clears throat> um, does the Lorentz series converge in the topology of X? Um, and if not, then can we reconstruct this function right from the Lorentz series? That's called a summability problem. Now, in the last, uh, in the next two slides, uh, I'm I'll be going very fast because I mean, what I have done here is that's a, another a one-hour talk. But what I have basically done is we um, decompose this X into uh, closed invariant subspaces, and depending and this, uh, I mean, this decomposition is based on. Um, a group action based on the torus group. Okay. Uh, if you do that, then um, we can uh, talk about an abstract Fourier series of uh, of a of a function f um, which belongs to X. <clears throat> so basically, our uh, goal is to uh, look at this uh, Laura series, but in a point of view of Fourier series. So can we um, uh, talk about a Fourier series of X and can we talk about its convergence? And then uh, what is the relation between for Laurent series and Fourier series on that space? So when we uh, talk about Fourier series, um, obviously a uh, fair will come into picture. Um, so uh, fair proof that suppose f is a continuous function on the torus or the unit circle. So f has a, you take the Fourier series of f. It is a well-known fact that uh, the Fourier series does not, I mean, need not converge to that function even pointwise sometimes. So then um, people ask, can we reconstruct this uh, Fourier series uh, right from, uh, can we reconstruct this function f right from this Fourier series? And Fair, when we, he was uh, 19 years of age, he observed a very important fact. He observed that uh, if a sequence um, S1, let's, let's say S, S0, S1, S2, if the sequence is not well behaved, then its behavior can be improved by taking uh, something called Cesaro means. What do you mean by Cesaro means? So let me uh, take an example. Suppose you look at uh, this sequence, uh, negative one to the power n, okay? Suppose you take the sequence, negative one to the power n. This sequence is not well behaved because uh, this sequence doesn't converge. S0 is uh, one, uh, S1 is negative one, uh, S2 will be one and so on. So the terms will be coming like one negative one, one negative one, which obviously doesn't converge. However, you can, um, take the Cesaro means of these terms, and uh, then it will be converging. Like for example, what are the Cesaro means? Uh, so for example, C0 is S0, C1 is uh, S0 plus S1 over two. Uh, C2 is S0 plus S1 plus S2 over three, and so on. So now what are the uh, terms of this uh, Cesaro mean sequence? Like uh, C naught is one, 
C2 is uh, 1 minus 1 over 2, that's 0. Uh, C3 will be um, 1 over 3. Similarly, C4 will be 0. Uh, C5 will be 1 over 5, and so on. Now, this is a subsequence of uh, 1 over n sequence, which obviously can't touch. So that's why you can, um, you can uh, change the behavior of the sequence by, I mean, if the sequence is not well behaved, you can uh, improve the behavior of the sequence just by taking scissor omits. So fair um, proved that uh, yes, uh, the, the partial sums of this uh, Fourier series does not converge. That's true. But if you take the Cesaro means of these partial sums, they do converge. So it was proved by Fair when it was he was age on 90. He proved that uh, the Cesaro means of the partial sums of the Fourier series of a continuous function converge uniformly to that function. Converge uniformly to that function means converges on that topology of a continuous function over, uh, on the unit circle. <clears throat> So what we did was, um, as I said, uh, we we looked at a locally convex topological vector space, which is let's say as uh, embedded in uh, O omega, is a space of our holomorphic functions, and uh, we took the uh, we took x as a direct sum of x alphas. And uh, these X alphas are nothing but these X alphas, they are uh, just a closed invariant subspace of uh, X. Okay. And we proved that uh, for every uh, function belongs to X, it has an abstract Fourier series. And the Fourier series as a, uh, I mean, as a, it was a, uh, proved by fair, um, but the, partial sums of the Fourier series, they need not converge. But if you take the Cesaro means of the partial sums, they do converge. So um, the Cesaro means of the partial sums of the Fourier series, they do converge in that specific topology. Okay. Now, it boils down to the fact that uh, why we took this approach because uh, if you take this approach, then uh, we are generalizing the uh, Lorna series into a Fourier series approach. Um, we, we, I talked about um, a group action on the torus. If you take the group action as a, they're called like a standard action. If you take the standard action of the torus, then all these Fourier series becomes a Lorna series. If you take X to be the space of our holomorphic function. So basically, uh, um, Fourier series, um, I mean, Lorna series can be thought of as a Fourier series with respect to uh, a standard action on the torus group. We are uh, also, um, I mean, we did not only uh, talk about the uh, convergence of um, on that topology. We also talk about something called unconditional convergence. So what do you mean by unconditional convergence? Um, we all teach, uh, or um, I'm sure that all of us will get to teach uh, calculus too. And uh, we know that, uh, um, suppose uh, a series is absolutely convergent, then uh, the series is also convergent with respect to any re re rearrangement of its terms, right? If you um, like rearrange the terms, that also the series is convergent. That um, convergence thing is true only for finite dimensional spaces. For infinite dimensional Banach spaces, let's say, um, if a series is absolutely convergent, doesn't mean that the series will converge with respect to any rearrangement of its terms. Okay. That is called unconditional convergent. So um, that's the um, um, uh, definition that I'm uh, looking here. Um, a numerical series summation of xj is absolutely convergent 
if you uh, if you take the absolute series, then it is convergent. And if it is unconditionally convergent, then uh, it is it convergent with respect to any rearrangement of its terms. So um, in finite dimensional cases, both of them are like uh, it's an if and only if condition. If it is absolutely convergent, then it is convergent with respect to any rearrangement of its terms. But for uh, infinite dimensional spaces. Uh, in fact, infinite dimensional like Banach or uh, Frechet spaces. Uh, if a series is absolutely convergent, then it is unconditionally convergent. However, the reverse is not true. Let me give you uh, an example. Suppose you take uh, X to be the space of all uh, square summable sequence space, uh, little L2 space. And suppose the uh, xk uh, be a, an element of L2 where the kth term is just one over k and all other terms are zero. If you take the um, C, uh, this, if you take this series, um, this series uh, definitely converges to the term um, one, then one half, one third, one fourth, and so on. <clears throat> However, um, if you take, um, I mean, this series is a map like, um, I mean, uh, this series is uh, uh, unconditionally convergent because uh, if you take uh, like um, any rearrangement of its terms, this is going definitely going to uh, go to one, one half, one third, and so on. However, this series is not absolutely convergent. Why? Because if you take the uh, L2 sum of this sequence, from uh, k runs from one to infinity of this x case, you are going to get a harmonic series, right? Um, you can check that it's very easy to calculate. You're going to get this harmonic series, which diverges. So that's why this series is not absolutely convergent. So that means uh, for infinite dimensional spaces, um, if you take the, uh, so there are some uh, series which are uh, absolutely convergent. And there are some series which are unconditionally convergent. Uh, L2 belongs here which is unconditionally convergent, but not absolutely convergent. However, for finite dimensional cases, both of them are the same. And uh, series is absolutely convergent and unconditionally convergent, they're the same. What we proved is uh, uh, our um, Fourier series, uh, our abstract Fourier series, the Fourier series converges um, unconditionally. That means the Fourier series convergent with respect to any rearrangement of its terms, which is a more general fact. In my, um, uh, in, I mean, uh, in my paper, I, I looked at especially uh, with uh, this space, which is a space of all holomorphic functions on a bounded Reinhardt domain which are uh, smooth up to the boundary. Okay. This is also a space of all, uh, I mean, this is a uh, fresh space and this belongs to, um, I mean, this is uh, embedded in o Omega. Well, um, for this space, I uh, looked at, because uh, all of them, um, so suppose uh, you take any, um, uh, you take an element which belongs to S, since uh, this is a space of all holomorphic functions, it definitely has an aura series. Um, we uh, proved that uh, the Lona series does not only converge to this topology, this con converges unconditionally. That means it converges with respect to any rearrangement of its terms. But uh, <clears throat> this space, as uh, this is a Fritsche space, so um, it has a family of semi norms which generates the topology. Now, for this talk, uh, let's take a very uh, simple case. Let's take uh, omega to be the open unit disk, which it belongs to um, the one variable uh, complex plane. 
Um, this space is a Fritsche space and um, it has a collection of semi norms which generates this topology. And these are the collection of semi norms in this space which generates the topology, which is basically you take the supremum of uh, all the derivatives up to, uh, if you take uh, the uh, semi norm of K, it, you take all the um, derivatives up to k th order and then you take the supreme. We, uh, I proved that uh, the Taylor series, since uh, we are talking about only uh, D, then the Lona series becomes Taylor series in this case. Uh, we proved that the Taylor series of uh, a function that belongs to this space uh, converges unconditionally to the function f in that topology. How to prove? Uh, I mean, I just use uh, integration bypass, but in a more general way. Um, it's easy to understand. Um, so we all know that, uh, suppose you take a function f, uh, which is in that space, a infinity d, I'm saying. That means the space of all holomorphic functions, which are smooth up to the boundary. Uh, since it is a uh, holomorphic function, it has, so we can write f of z. Um, so we can write, let me just write f of z. As, uh, let's say, cj is e to the power j where j belongs to me. We know that uh, f has a power series and uh, by Cauchy integral formula, we know what are cj's. Uh, cj's can be uh, given as one over two pi i. Uh, suppose of zeta over uh, zeta to the power j plus one d zeta. And uh, let's take what zeta is. Let's take uh, z to be a non-zero uh, man. I mean, uh, let's take z to be non-zero. Okay? For a z equals to zero case, you can always extend the result by Riemann removable singularity theorem. But for, uh, let's take z equals to, uh, z is not zero. So then uh, let us use our old fashioned uh, change of variable formula. Um, so let's take zeta to be uh, z e power i theta. So then, uh, d zeta will be um, z e power i theta i d theta and uh, let's change it to so cj will be in terms of uh, r and theta it will be 2 pi i and uh, theta runs from 0 to 2 pi and then uh, you take f of uh, z e to the power i theta and Let's take zeta to the power g here. So it will be z to the power g e power i uh, j theta. And uh, d z, d, this, here it will be d zeta over zeta. So d zeta over zeta will be z e power i theta. So this will cancel out. And you have only i theta. So i d theta. So this. Uh, so i and i will get cancelled out and you will only have 1 over 2 pi theta runs from 0 to 2 pi and uh, you will get f of um, e power i theta and uh, z j uh, e power i j theta t theta so this is our c j now, if you multiply z to the power j on both sides, you will get cj z to the power j. So let's take this z to the power j multiplying on both sides. We we'll get 1 over 2 pi. Um, theta runs from 0 to 2 pi. Um, f of z e to the power i theta and e power negative i j theta d theta. Right from here, 
if you uh, take integration by parts uh, two times, like for example, if you take integration by parts on this variable, taking this as your uh, u and this as your dv. So integration u dv is uh, integration v, um, <coughs> uv minus integration v du. If you take integration by parts uh, two times, <laughs> ultimately we will get that and after you have to do a little more work in here. Uh, at last, you will get this uh, semi norm is less than equals to some junk constant times, um, like sorry, uh, sum of uh, cj is to the power j. You will get as a c times um, a sum of one over j times j plus one where j belongs to it. But we know that uh, this series is converging. So that's why um, we can prove that this is also convergent. And that's how we prove that uh, the series converges absolutely. Okay. It's just a, a, a simple use of integration by parts two times. Okay. Um, I mean, here I don't have time and space to do, do all these calculations, but uh, for D, um, for unit digs, this is the calculation. Now, if you uh, use uh, like um, several dimension complex analysis, then uh, you have to do this integration by parts, but in several variables. But uh, the, the method is the same. Uh, here you will get one over j times j plus one, only uh, one variable. Here you will get multivariable j times j plus one series, which is again a convergence. So um, that's how you prove that uh, the series converges absolutely. All right. Um, maybe I went a bit first. Um, so this was my uh, references. Oh, I, I don't think there's anything wrong with uh having enough time to have questions so uh, there's nothing wrong with that whatsoever in your bond um uh, the floor is still yours if there's any last items you want to talk about but otherwise I, this was fantastic i'd love to clap for you thank you thank you awesome um i, I definitely have a question or two but i, I want to start by asking if anybody else has any questions that a near bond can help address Uh, go ahead, Dave. Um, hey, um, I have a quick question on the the Reinhardt domain that you mentioned. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm trying to understand how would uh, I? I mean, I'm not very familiar with this, but I'm just mm -hmm. trying to understand. Like, is it like uh, always convex or something? Uh, how about the geometry? How does um, it look like? Is it like more or less like a um, star shaped or things like that? In general, is there any description that I understand is better? Yes, I mean, uh, since uh, um, let's say a complex two dimension, uh, since complex two dimension is real four dimension, we cannot uh, visualize it uh, like uh, in general, but we can always look at the absolute space. Uh, mm -hmm. Like, for example, if you want to uh, look at, um, let's say, here, if you want to look at a uh, um, A disk cross disk, which uh, like a disk cross disk in two variables. Then, um, so suppose this one is our mod Z1 axis and this one is mod Z2 axis. We always talk about uh, like absolute value axis. That's why we can uh, visualize. Mm -hmm. okay. And then uh, mod Z1 less than one, let's say, okay. and mod Z2 less than one. So this is a polydisc. That was suppose mod z1 square plus mod z2 square less than one. That will be like a uh, 
Oh, okay, 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 okay. Mm. Oh, okay, I see. I see, and and uh, okay. And you said that this is complete when when the origin is uh, inside. Yes. Hmm. Like for example, an annulus cross an annulus that is not complete. Oh, okay. Yeah. Because, yeah. Uh, but but like, uh, are there any characterization? Like, uh, are you able to characterize the Reinhardt domain in in CN? Like, it it's always going to be like. Um, how do I say? It? Like, is is it always going to be some sort of convex domain, uh, or there is some sort some sort of characterization? Like, I'm I'm trying to think about like, can there be an example where it's not convex? Is that even possible? Not convex. Um... Or, or uh, well, always it would be like a star shaped domain or something like that. Uh, is, is that is that? Because I mean, if it is star shaped, then it's not convex, right? So mm -hmm. can can there be a star shaped domain which is a Reinhardt domain? Uh, I think uh, um, I think in uh, several complex variable we talk about uh, pseudo convexity, which is basically the I mean the only difference um, the main main difference between uh, one variable and several complex variable is the pseudo convexity or the domain of holomorphy. Like for example, in one variable, mm -hmm. um, every domain is the domain of holomorphy. What do you mean by domain of holomorphy? It means that you cannot extend the, uh, uh, like for example, suppose in one dimensional um, uh, complex plane, you take a domain. Okay. So uh, this domain, uh, if you take uh, a point P here, mm -hmm. um, and if you, uh, let's say, uh, the function f of z is one over uh, let's say z minus p. Mm -hmm. So this function uh, you cannot extend right uh, after this domain. Okay? I mean uh, you cannot extend this domain to this. Then uh, the I mean the function will not be uh, holomorphic. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's why it's uh, we call that in one variable every domain is domain of holomorphy. I mean there is a maximum uh, domain you which cannot be extended. Okay. 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 In uh, several complex variable, uh, um, like here, you can always extend domains. Um, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, about the star shift and stuff, uh, I'm, I'm not. No, sure. I see. I see. I see. Yeah, it, it it was just a random question because I was trying to understand because I have never been exposed to this. So I was thinking, like, is if there is anything that actually characterizes those type of domains. So I was that was just a just a question. Yeah, mm -hmm. but yeah, I think I I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah no yeah. problem. Yeah, thank you, thank you. It was mm -hmm. nice talk. Awesome. Does anybody else have any other questions for Nirban? So Nirban, this is a really really nice talk. Um, yeah, really natural questions um, that I'm sort of yeah surprised that. Um, nobody has had thought about these things um before um it's nice to find those those kinds of problems um so i guess i i, I had mentioned before about um when uh, you have sort of a, a bergman or a hardy space when p is mm -hmm. one mm -hmm. uh, it's not uniformly convex meaning that um it doesn't satisfy like a uh unique nearest neighbor property right so like there's no so when p is two you have a hilbert space you have orthogonal projections mm -hmm. uh when p isn't two but is strictly greater than one and less than infinity you have metric projections mm -hmm. um but when uh yeah so so uh i guess my point here is just to ask about like what's going on with that i mean if you think about uh like a, a, a Taylor series, um, somehow this is the projection of the function onto, uh, you know, the first n monomials, the, the, the span of the first n monomials. Um, but when you lose that projection, um, somehow you, you also, I mean, you're going to lose the, the convergence somehow, right? I guess I'm asking if that's kind of what's, uh, what's going on here um you have to do something different than a, a projection because you don't have a projection for h1 you would say right or for a1 or for um yeah any space that isn't like if your space x is doesn't it isn't uniformly convex 
um, like, is there a theorem out there uh, maybe about like, uh, yeah, given all of the, the correct hypotheses that like, if you don't have a uniformly convex space, sort of the, uh, if X isn't, isn't uniformly convex, then um, uh, you'll never have convergence of, um, of like a, a Taylor type series. Or the converse of that, like if you don't have convergence, can you show that uh, X isn't going to be uniformly convex? Not thought about these uh, angles. Yeah, no, no worries. Um, yeah. uh, just, just I guess a, a food for for thought. Mm. Uh, yeah, I, I, as soon as you said that, Chris, I'm like, that actually sounds like an interesting thought. If you try to, what, what, what does the reverse look like? Like, I don't, that sounds interesting, but. Uh, I, I, I suspect that it's true. Um, yeah, but it's interesting that that's not addressed in any of the, it, 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 like, that that's not addressed in any of these sort of bigger theorems. Maybe it's a trivial direction or something like that that's just not written down or something. Or maybe yeah. there's an easy counterexample. I don't know. Right. Um, but uh, so I, I, I at Nearbon, I, I, I wanted to, to let you know that I, I really did a pretty. So I, I, I'm sort of in day situation where a lot of the complex stuff, uh, it's it's interesting stuff. It's just not stuff I've thought about super recently. But the discussion about you know reduction to Hardy and Berkman space and stuff like that really allowed me to kind of sink my teeth into it, which was really, really nice. So I, I appreciate that. Um, I, I did have two quick questions. Um, in, in terms of a Reinhardt space, this is not something I've, I've encountered before. Um, and so I'm curious, you, you say, you know, the, the whole, the mantra there is that it's a uh, Reinhardt space is something that has sort of circular symmetry to it. Mm -hmm. I mean, is there a reason why the, you say circular symmetry meaning like a disc or an annulus or something like that? Um, why circular symmetry? And is it to, is it to force convexity is that sort of the main idea are there are there weaker versions of reinhardt spaces that are maybe not quite circular but like oval or ellipsoid or something like that um like uh, like in analysis so if you talk about like um, taylor or nora series uh, you always thought about because I mean you see they look at the uh, complex analysis books they always talk about like either a disk or an annulus and that's how you get the series right. Um, I I don't know if it is like a ellipse or like other like which doesn't have a circular symmetry. If there is a um, hmm. like um, series will be possible or not. Yeah, I mean, I, I definitely see the advantage of the symmetry for sure. No, for no problem. But I, you know, that that's an idle curiosity is what happens if you I, re retain some symmetry, but it's not mm -hmm. perfect. You know, I don't know. Uh, it's just a, a thought. Um, uh, the 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 other question I had was that you 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 gave a uh, this 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 question about whether you have a a functions uh, Taylor series or Fourier series can uh, converge back to that function. Uh, right. And so you, you talked about Hardy spaces and you said that uh, when you look at a Hardy space, if P is strictly larger than one or strictly less than infinity, then you have mm -hmm. this nice result that holds. Uh, and then you did this for the Bergman space. And then right after you did the Bergman space, you said uh, not only uh, so, like for example, we're looking at this on the screen, right? Z Zeus theorem here says that uh, you have this result for the Bergman space, but in one dimension. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then, like on the next slide, you uh, produce a theorem for kind of the same thing, but for higher dimensions. If I'm understanding it mm -hmm. correctly, mm -hmm. um, is there a higher dimensional version of that for the Hardy space? Because this is just for the Bergman space, right? Yes, this is just for the Bergman space. I, I don't know enough multi multi dimensional uh, complex analysis to to understand the literature, but uh, is there a version of this? I mean, I, I'd be curious when this was proven, like if this is a super recent result that might give mm -hmm. insight into its difficulty. I was wondering if if, if it exists for, if that multi-dimensional version exists for the Hardy space, uh, if, if it doesn't, uh, what's the stopping point? All right, because this theorem due to Reese is pretty old, uh, relatively speaking. Yes. 
I don't know. Do you, do you, do you, do you have any insight in that direction? If not, that's okay. No, I, I can't think of any uh, on, on that direction. Gotcha. I was, I was just curious if it exists uh -huh. for the Bergman, whether it exists for the Hardy. Um, if, if, if it's not in the literature, maybe that's a different thing to take a look at. Um, although I'd be curious how complicated that Bergman yeah, is. is. Right. Um, uh, but yeah, all in all, um, this was super great talk. I, I appreciate it. this. Is, this is definitely uh, it's, it's close enough to my to my wheelhouse that I can sort of understand where things are going, which is nice. But it's far enough away that it's all terribly interesting. So uh, I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, anybody else have one? Any final thoughts or questions or comments? All right. Well, let's thank our speaker again. Thank you very much. I appreciate it.